பார்த்திபன் கனவு இங்கிலீஷ் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் பை ஆனந்த் கனன் நரேட்டட் பை சுஜாதா ஆனந்த் புக் டூ சாப்டர் ஃபிஃப்டீன் த வாய்ஜ் திஷப் லெஃப்ட் மாமல்லபுரம் வித் விக்ரமன் ஆன் போர்ட் இட் கெயின் ஸ்பீட் அண்ட் டேர்ன் ஈஸ்ட்வர்ட் த டெம்பிள் டவர்ஸ் அண்ட் கிரீனரி ஆஃப் மாமல்லபுரம் டிசப்பியர்ட் ஃப்ரம் சைட் த வாட்டர் வாஸ் இன் ஃப்ராதி லைக் இட் வாஸ் நியர் த ஷோர் த சர்ஃபிஸ் ஆஃப் த வாட்டர் வாஸ் கிளியர் ப்ளூ it was heaving restlessly and hissing the hiss sounded like a non-stop sigh vikram thought the silence of the deep sea and the noisy surface resembled his own state of mind deep inside he felt calm but his surface mind was a whirl of thoughts he remembered king parthiban's dreams of reclaiming the glory of the choya clan He also remembered his dreams of sailing to far away kingdoms. He realized that those dreams were coming true in a strange fashion. He dreamt of sailing with his forces to conquer far away lands with his head held high. Instead, he had been deported and was sailing under the lion flag with his arms bound. While he was thinking about it, the captain of the ship approached him with a few men and freed him from the chains. When Vikraman asked why he was being freed he was told it was on the emperor's orders Where are you taking me asked Vikraman We were asked to take you to an island that is 12 days away came the reply Vikraman asked again Who lives on that island the captain responded We don't know you can roam freely on the ship don't attempt to escape though We will have to chain you again. Vikraman went around the ship. He tried to initiate conversation with the sailors. It did not work. They all turned mute as long as he was around. He returned to the deck and started looking at the sky. His thoughts went to his mother. What would she be thinking about right now? Would she be disappointed at his efforts turning futile? Would she be missing me? Would she be proud of how I handled myself with the emperor? Would the sage have gone to counsel her? His thoughts turned to the sage. He somehow materialized on the shipping docks to bless me as the ship was pulling away. He really seems to care about me. Then he thought of the young woman. She was on the streets of Kanchi one day and Mamalapuram the next. How did she get there? And why? What large eyes she had. Why were those eyes in tears? Was it pity? Why would she have pity on a stranger? If it was not pity, why did she have such tenderness in her eyes? Vikraman was immersed in such thoughts. He did not notice the dusk form. He was surprised to see the reflection of stars in the sea. He was ashamed of losing himself in thoughts about a unknown woman. His thoughts then wandered to Ponan and Marli. They really are devoted to me. Would they be talking about me? Or perhaps about Marli's grandfather? How brave was that old man? Why couldn't all men of that country be like him? It was about an hour and a half after the sunset. The moon rose on the eastern horizon. The moon was three-fourth full. It seemed as if a golden bow was rose out of the sea waters perhaps such a bowl held the nectar that emerged when they churned the milky ocean in heaven that night the nectar seemed to come out of that bowl and spread serenity all around the earth vikram saw this mesmerizing sight and thought again of the young woman's face the woman's face had the same golden hue thought vikram she was indeed beautiful more beautiful than the figures you see in art and sculpture who might she be 12 days went by in this way vikraman's days flew by in thoughts about the young woman the sunrise on the 13th day brought a surprise the sun instead of emerging from the ocean emerged behind a dense growth of trees while vikraman was admiring this sight the captain approached him and said Prince I have been ordered to leave you near this island 
You can swim, of course. How far from the shore will you leave me? asked Vikraman. Not far. We will give you a log of wood for support, came the reply. What if I said I won't get off the ship? In that case, we have been ordered to tie you to the log and let you float ashore. I will go on my own then, finally agreed Vikraman. When the ship got close enough, the sailors dropped a wood into the ocean and helped Vikraman climb down into the water. Vikraman alternated between swimming and floating on the log towards the shore. As he got close to the shore, he realized that what looked like a row of ants on the shore was indeed a crowd. Vikraman's mind started racing. Who are these people? Why are they on the shore at this time? What might their language be like? End of chapter 15